Let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night, Lord, and the, these times that in which we live, Lord. We ask that you would walk with us, show us the way, and your word, like David said, lamp to our feet and light unto our path. So we ask that you would show us tonight, and those who watch and listen, Lord, we ask that they may receive the blessing and understand the knowledge. These things we ask for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Praise God. Praise God. Tonight, we'll start a new lesson. And for some of you, it's going to be uh, something that uh, I've shared with you and, and we can recant because it's important that the information that you get, it, it, it has to be applied so that uh, you can be uh, aware mm -hmm. of your surroundings, aware of your environment, aware of the things that are, are going on right before our very eyes. Mm -hmm. But as children of God, you can say, devil, I see you. Get back behind me. <laughs> and call him out and be able to stand and hopefully share what you know with other people so that they can know. And then they can share it with others and so on and so on. And that this knowledge of God can be ge geometrically projected into our communities and our, our land. Because we are uh, living in perilous times, Amen. very perilous times. And, and we can spend just this session just talking about all of the things that are going on for, in, you know, in, in, in the land and actually even around the world. But the thing about it is uh, we who are of the household of faith, it's important for us to stand. Even if everybody else is willing to fall, mm -hmm. we have to stand. Okay, so God bless you. Tonight we're gonna, gonna talk about the three levels of philosophy. And, and, and I wanna go into how our minds can be manipulated away from God's word. Manipulated away, pulled away. You know, uh, Paul spoke of a great falling away, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the enemy, and you know, we call that the apostasy. The falling away, but but tonight uh, we want to focus on these three levels of of philosophy. You know, uh, so a level is you know is something higher, something lower, and then something beneath that. Those are different levels. So let, let's go on and get started on it, and uh, want you to understand. <clears throat> uh, Paul wrote to the church at Corinth in his first letter. Therefore, my beloved brethren. brethren and sisters, uh, be ye what? Steadfast, mm -hmm. unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. It's important that we, we maintain, and, and I love. Uh, Psalm 1, it said, blessed, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Nor standeth in the way of sinners, mm -hmm. nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But, in, but his delight, in his, in his, his delight is in the law of what? Mm -hmm. Of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Day and, night. Mm -hmm. and he shall be like a what? Tree planted by the rivers of water. So we have to be planted, we have to be rooted, we have to be grounded. In order for us to be steadfast and unmovable, mm -hmm. we have to have the word of God rooted in our lives. You know, because a lot of winds are gonna blow, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of strange doctrines are gonna come and go. They're going to come, and, and, uh, and people are going to be pulled from one side to the other. You know, just let a, a, what we would call or consider to be a snake oil salesman come through. And I'm talking about a, 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 a preacher, a, what we call a snake oil, a snake oil salesman, salesman. And he can come and set up a tent across from your church, and guess what? 
Sunday morning <laughs> and Wednesday night or whenever night, oh, we got a revival and they're over there all of the time. Okay, and pulling poor people away and playing these types of games. Not all tent revivals are like that, but y'all understand what I'm saying. So it's important. Not only that, why? Uh, and and the, to the church of Ephesus, Paul wrote in Ephesians 4, verse 14, said that we henceforth forth, be no more what children tossed to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to what? Deceive. Lie in wait to deceive. And uh, I, can, I can back up a few verses. And, uh, you know, God, Jesus, has provided us, amen, with, with apostles, what? Prophets, Teachers. evangelists, Teachers. right? Teachers. And pastors and teachers for what? The work of the ministry. Hmm? Yes. yes, yes. And what's the work of the ministry is supposed to, to, to produce? The perfection of the saints. That, that, that we can, yeah, for the what? Perfecting, Perfecting of the saints. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So, so uh, that that we can be edified, that we can grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That we can go forward and teach and bring in more saints. <laughs> you know, bring in saints, not ants. <laughs> okay. So, so it's important. Yes, 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 yes. So the work of the ministry for the edification of the church for the perfecting of the saints all right it's important that we be able to do that okay going right along in Isaiah verse chapter 1 verse 18 God says come now let us what reason together though your sins may be as scarlet they shall be as white as no. snow Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God's invitation for us, to us, that we can come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. And God will be faithful and just to forgive us and restore us and whatever. But if you're prodigal, if you're someone who doesn't know Jesus, don't know God for yourself, it's very handy, very, uh, I would say readily, available today for you to find someone, find a church, find a minister, find a, a believer who can help you on your journey. But understand this, we who are of the, who are of the household of faith, it's important, again, being steadfast and unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, being that tree planted by the rivers of water, right? Don't be tossed and turned by every wind of doctrine. Very important. But but Paul, but James uh, uh, said this, this statement, this observation, that a double-minded man is unstable in what? Oh. All his ways. So we have to have our minds made up. Okay, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ who? Jesus. Christ Jesus. Jesus. It's important for us as believers to be strengthened according to his word not according to this world, according to his word, not according to this world. The Apostle Paul had a frustration. <laughs> okay. He said, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you that you should not obey what? The truth. The truth, in particular in the New Testament, is, is, is that is the, the essence of who the church is. Uh, he said, uh, you will not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you, okay? We can get pulled aside, we can get out, we can have our opinions, our minds changed, uh, our sources of information particularly, uh, what causes us to waver in our faith. 
Now, one of the things about it is we want God to do great things. We want mighty wonders and works to perform, right? We want miracles. We want signs. We want wonders. We want all of these things. But one thing about it is we don't want the truth all of the time. And that, that, that can hinder us in our Christian journey. Uh, again, I, I'm re referencing Paul quite often, you know, but mm -hmm. I, I can't help but to do so. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, he said, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, and I believe we are in the latter times, mm -hmm. says, Some shall depart from the faith, mm -hmm. giving heed, yeah. giving heed, listening, following, believing, regurgitating, okay, to seducing spirits and doctrines of what? Devils. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Am I right? And having their consciousness, consciousness seared with a hot iron. iron. Yep. Sometimes you can smell things burning. Yeah, right. Anybody say, I smell something burning. <laughs> you know, you don't see no smoke, nobody, but you can smell it burning. Uh, I submit to you quite possibly it's the conscience. Yep. You know, but one thing about it, Matthew 7 and 12, and it, it talks about the golden rule, okay? And, and we paraphrase it as saying, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, right? And uh, that is a very crucial part, actually, of our Christian walk because we are not influenced by the kingdom of this world. We are influenced by the kingdom of God. And that makes a difference in our walk, our daily walk, our daily talk, the things we do, the things we believe, even the people we run behind our support or encourage. We are the household of faith, the people, the children of the Most High God. True or false? False. It is one thing to change your way of thinking when something you thought was right ends up being wrong. But it's another thing when what you thought was wrong becomes right. Is that confusing? <laughs> so a lot of times, particularly as we grow up, we, we learn and we hear things and, and, and as youth, as children, and sometimes we, it's almost like, like, well, for example, a lot of our traditions that we might keep and, and, and hold on to. We, some of these traditions we are, we're ready to die for or willing to die for, okay? So, so something that you thought was right, and then let's say, for example, you found out in the Bible, it, may, it could possibly be the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times we hear people say, well, it, it, they'll make a statement, ain't that in the Bible? <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the most popular ones I can remember is cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> And it's not in the Bible. Mm. Well, like, like they want to take the word scripture, you know, they take one word and they get to know the truth and the truth will set you free. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. you set you lot. free. Set no, that's not what he's saying. Set you free. Yeah, and I emphasize that because yeah. there is a difference. Yeah, yeah. You know, to be set free is a process, to be made free is a spontaneous transformation, it's a change. You know, in other words, well, I'm not as free. I'm, you know, well, I'm going to be free tomorrow. You know, through Christ, you're free right then and there. I don't care if you're in your hospital bed, uh, on your deathbed, you can be in the jail, wherever you may be, you are free then, you know. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. But it, 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 it's something about some of the things that we have heard and learned. But uh, we must have the courage even the integrity to, uh, when we hear God's word, that we make adjustments to it. Now, some things can be easy. <laughs> you know, some things may be a little bit more difficult. 
they may be more uh, deeper and deeply embedded in our flesh and in our, our, our human existence. And some things we got, we got to be prayed, you, you know. But it's important that we have that confidence in Jesus as we spend time with him, learn more of him, submit more to him. These things can turn around and change. But let's move on, okay? Understand this. God's word has the power to shape and to mold what we think. Uh, can I get some agreement on that? Anybody Amen. Amen. disagree? Amen. It's God's word yeah. that has made a difference in, I guarantee you, the way I think, I thought, and he's still shaping how I think. And the thing about it is, every day, it's important for us to seek and strive to be more Christ-like. It's but, important. But is there a scripture say, as a man thinketh? So is he. Yeah. So <laughs> in, in one of the books, we, we know right and wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. If you think wrong, you believe wrong, yes. then you do wrong. Yes. Uh-huh. Yes. What you, you believe see, determines why, yeah, that's why the Bible, what you think. So that's why the Bible is a, is a, is a mountain road map. I mean, it's the guide. Yes. It's because it's going to be right. Very, very true. It's going to be right. Very true. So let it be established that God's word is the ultimate authority in the life Amen. of humanity, in, of men, and all of humanity. God's word is the ultimate authority, that, and that helps to make the difference. So I, I can say this, mention this from a philosophical perspective, you know, uh, uh, about God's word. And uh, try, <laughs> try, uh, you just might like it. I believe you will. And I, I'm just, <laughs> just saying it like that. That used to be a popular saying, try it, you like it. Yeah. You know, you know that, that, I guess that went by the way of where's the beef and, 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 and all of that. Lord have mercy. I love Isaiah. He said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, he will abundantly pardon. That's just a reiteration or re reinforcement of what we already have talked about to a degree. For my way, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, mm -hmm. saith the Lord. So, in essence, we who are believers, we have the invitation of God to take upon ourselves his philosophical outlook instead of our own or the uh, philosophies of men. There's a lot of, in this world, in this life, uh, there are books and records of many great men, we call them great thinkers, philosophers, okay? And uh, uh, we recognize Solomon, King Solomon, as having been the wisest man who has ever lived. Mm -hmm. But understand that, that wisdom that Solomon had came from where? Came from God. When Solomon first was given <laughs> the kingdom of Israel, mm -hmm. and, and what happened? God came to him, spoke to him, and said, tell me what you want. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. let somebody, <laughs> let, let uh, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, who by the way, yesterday made $13 billion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in one day. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> what if he came to you and asked you, he said, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. What would you do? What would you ask for? <laughs> but when God came to Solomon, God told Solomon the same thing. Yep. And Solomon, you know, most of us would say, Lord, I want to I wanna be a, 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 I want to have a big old palace and I want, you know, servants. I want enough money that, that I, when I jump into it, I can just swim like in a swimming pool and you know, money, 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 all that. But Solomon didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for, for riches. What did he ask for? Wisdom. Wisdom. Lord, give, 
give me wisdom that I can rule your people. And uh, I have to say, that impressed God. And so God said, because you didn't ask for riches and wealth, material stuff, I'm going to give you that wisdom that you asked for. And guess what? You say when God shows up, he shows up. I'm going to give you that wisdom and the wealth. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, he can do it. Some estimate that Solomon's equi the equivalency today uh, of what Solomon had, uh, it was uh, could have been as much as $200 billion in wealth. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm. More than you can shake a stick at. Mm. Or me, all of us together. Mm -hmm. So, so my thoughts are not your thoughts, and, and neither are your ways my ways. For high are the heavens above the earth, that so are my ways uh, higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts, higher than your thoughts. So, understand it, receive it at this if you would. This is God's invitation to us to come up and learn of his way, his thought, his philosophical outlook. We are entitled as his children mm -hmm. to go up to that. Up as compared to what? Down in the valley. It's like being in the valley. And, and one thing about it, when you're down in the valley and, and let's say in the struggles, of day-to-day -day life, all of the decisions, all of the things, and all of the people, and, 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 and all of the issues that surround us. If we're down in the valley, if we're at street level, guess what? We can only see the things that are immediately around us in our environment. But one thing about it, this is, a, uh, this is the way the military operates. When the military is down in the valley in the battle, they don't know, they cannot see all of the things that are going on. But if you've got a general of the army who is up high looking down at the, at the battle, he can see where the enemy is coming from, right? And he can get, send a command to, to do this or that. That's how God operates. But he wants us to come up from out of the valley, come away from street level, that we can see things higher and that he, we can see and recognize the enemy and be able to, uh, let's say, frustrate his strategy, the enemy's strategy. But as long as we're down fighting and cussing and fussing and on ground level in the valley, <laughs> We forfeit, we lose the opportunities for victory because we cannot see or recognize the strategy of the enemy. It's one of the reasons why Jesus uh, always encourages us to uh, love our enemies. <laughs> That's a strategy that the devil can't handle. Pray for those hmm, that curse you. Or bless them that curse you. Pray for those who despitefully misuse you. But that's some strategy that the enemy does not have a, an arsenal against. Love. He can't do, he can't fight with that. So, so that, that, there it is as far as, so our call is to come up, okay, <coughs> to God's position. And he gives us that through his holy word. Mm -hmm. So the world's agenda, uh, it is to influence and change what you think about things. Mm -hmm. They want to influence and change what you, as a believer, as a, a blood-bought believer in Christ Jesus, they are working desperately, even as I speak, to get you to change your mind. Let go of God's word. Let go of God's teaching. Let go of God's philosophical outlook and take theirs. You see, 
The devil is in an evangelical, so to speak, mission also. And that is to cause us as believers to give up on God, give up on the church. Uh, and notice one of the things that's happening today that a lot of churches are getting attacked. Oh, yeah. Tearing down, tearing down. You know, they're tearing down statues, and guess what? They've become bold. And see, when the church is quiet, the enemy gets bold. When the children of light withdraw, what happens? The darkness fills that void that you just vacated. It's like us cutting the light switch off in this building. The minute you hit that switch, turn the power off, what, happens? what jumps in? Darkness. Darkness. So it's important. That's why Jesus in Matthew chapter 5 said, let your what light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Our problem is we want to turn our light down. You know, it shines bright here in the church with other saints. Oh, my, baby, your, your light show is bright. Oh, yeah. I've been, yeah. I've been. Thank you, Holy Ghost. <laughs> well, all our lights are shining in here. Oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm blessed and highly favored. <laughs> but the light is most powerful in darkness. It shines brighter, more effectively, more efficiently in the dark. Mm -hmm. So understand that, y'all. You're powerful out here in the world where God has created you, designed you, gifted you, enabled you to be. Oh, yeah, you're going to meet some opposition. <laughs> and, and when, but when your philosophical outlook starts combining with the things of this world, the ideologies, the philosophies, the doctrines of this world, it affects your light. I say it like this. Light plus dark equals what? Dim. Dim. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what's happening. There's a lot of dim. <laughs> Somebody might call them dimwits. <laughs> a lot of dim Christians, you know. But Jesus is much, much harsher than I am. Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. He's going to love one and hate the other. Or despise one or cling to the other. And then also in Revelation, he was, talk, he was saying, you're neither hot nor cold. I wish you were either one. But because you're not high, I'm going to spit you. I'm going to vomit you. I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. You don't want that to happen. Okay? True believers are rooted in God's word. Okay? So let us not find ourselves sinking in this sand of this time, of this world. But it's time for us to rise up above all of the philosophies and ideologies and the belief system and all that, a lot of them. Yep. And, and, and one of the sad things before I move on is that unfortunately many Christians, strong Christians who have been in church for decades, <laughs> you know, some have been in there 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years and have not changed. I call them mossbacks. They've been in on a pew so long that they're like a tree. They're, they're growing moss on them. Don't be like that. What is philosophy? It's a system of values by which one lives. System of values by which one lives, okay? When values change, so does the culture. And right now, as I speak, we're in a cultural upheaval. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the values are being manipulated and the values are being changed. The philosophical positions are being uh, adjusted. And I'll have to say that there has been a paradigm shift. 
In other words, that's the, the, the whole table mm -hmm. is, is being shifted, has been shifted because of the times in which we live. And the question is, what are we doing as believers in Christ Jesus? Uh, at the beginning of this discussion, we, we talked about being steadfast and unmovable, right? Yeah. And we talked about being like a tree planted by what? The rivers of water. And, and so these things, in, in, in times in which we live, these things are crucial and important for us as, as believers. Now, one thing, one indication, by the way, uh, if, if uh, you're being, an in, being ineffective in your Christian walk, in your stance, in your position, is when everybody loves you. It's when everybody loves you. You got everybody in love with your church people, lost people. Everybody loves you. Because there's something about the Christ in you. <laughs> it's going to break. It's, it's gonna, it's like, sometimes it's like a, a just dragging fingernails across a chalkboard. <laughs> there's something about the Christ in you that people are just not going to like. But if, but if everybody inviting you and everybody loving on you and, and, and all of this and all of that, there's an issue. Another thing is that God has provided us with a place that we can call home. Uh, some of you have traveled different parts of the world. But there's one thing about it. There's nothing better than getting back, amen, to the good old U.S. of A. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mm -hmm. You think about one day, we're gonna, our feet are going to touch down in glory. <laughs> Home at last. Here's a path. Home at last. Lord have mercy. But Psalm 33 and 12, I, I love this. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. The providential hand of God allowed us or caused us to be here in this land and even here at this church tonight. It's important that we recognize that we are or can, uh, seek to be one nation under God. Now the enemy doesn't like this. <laughs> the enemy is on a rampage. The enemy is building his army of people who are even parts of our church congregations. And as they will say from the pulpit to the back door, It's real and it's true. Very important. I got a question. Have you ever noticed or experienced uh, efforts to influence you in how you saw things? Has anybody ever uh, trying to get you to see something differently? I, I know our, our, our kids, you know, most of them are, are entering into, have entered into adulthood and, and they, they come back, uh, several of them do, and uh, to, uh, talk about some of the conversations that they've been having with some of their their counterparts, some of their 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 uh, let's say associates and and friends, and, and 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 I have to tell you, in some cases it can be real scary. And it's not being scary from our kids' perspective; it's a fear, a concern of what these young men and young women are taking up and beginning to believe in. Some of them have been in church all of their lives. All of their lives. Grew up in church. Good parents. But yet, they have or are actually just body soaking in a church, bodies soaking up the uh, uh, the cooling of the air conditioning system. 
but it's, but it, it, uh, but we should exercise or, ex or express concern because their minds are being challenged to no longer see things through what they have been taught in church, but to adopt and live by and move on some of these things of this world today. We know 80% of the millennials, 80%, eight out of 10 millennials today believe in socialism and communism. They see them as viable, viable systems in which America should be in. And that's why you see a lot, of, a lot of them out there in the streets today. They want to overturn what's, what's present in favor of some of these things. And they are not uh, 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 shy about it anymore. Like I say, as we are quiet, as we shut up, and as we step back, if we're not speaking up, guess what? It makes the devil bolder. Mm -hmm. And it's happening before our eyes. Mm -hmm. I am a watchman on the wall. As should every pastor be. Watchman. That we see these things from the mountain view instead of street level. Our call, our responsibility is if we see the enemy approaching, we should sound the alarm. We should tell everybody, right? Mm -hmm. Let them know. If for no other reason, church leaders should let them know about the dangers so that their blood is not on our hands. That your blood not going to be on my hands. <laughs> it says that if if they if you tell them and they don't pay attention or they ignore it or they psh, you crazy pastor. <laughs> you you full of fake news. <laughs> you get it from fake news. And go on about the business. I'd rather tell you what I see and be wrong than to close my mouth of what I'm seeing, not tell you, warn you, and be right. Y'all understand what that means? I'd rather talk to you and tell you these things and be wrong. I'd rather for you get upset with me on this side. <laughs> get mad at me for speaking the truth on this side. Then me know, I, I, like, remember I, uh, not, uh, Jeremiah, they treated him the same way. <laughs> Old fool, yeah. bald headed. Sit down somewhere and shut your mouth, mm -hmm. old man. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah got a little bit discouraged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Went home and sat down and decided he wasn't going to talk, tell him anything else. Wasn't going to preach no more. Wasn't going to proclaim the prophetic word of God anymore. Wasn't going to tell you what thus say the Lord anymore. But he said when he sat down, something started happening on his inside said it was like fire in his bones. Boy, that's something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but the thing about it is, our duty is to sound the alarm. Yeah, so God bless you from, that, from that, that thought. Here's something else. Are you finding that some of the messages and information are contradictory to God's word? This is one of the things, very important thing. She said, I've, in, in my uh, 30 plus years of, of preaching the gospel and 30 years of pastoring, uh, people will very quickly uh, minimize what you're trying to tell them. Or oh, that's, that's just your opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, every, and, and don't get me wrong, every now and then we might make 
I, I could, let's just call it a mistake. May, may just see something the wrong from the wrong angle, from the wrong perspective. Okay, one time <laughs> or another. And we may not be perfect, but one thing about it, God's word is always true. Sometimes the vessel that brings it to you may not be the, what you want, may not be what you like, may, be, may not be what you think is the appropriate messenger. Hmm. But I'm encouraging you to look at and listen to what God's word is saying. That's the important thing. There's a man, uh, anybody remember the, 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 the book or the movies, Chronicles of Narnia? I know some of our kids love that C.S. Lewis was a writer. C.S. Lewis started off as a, a very skeptical person of, uh, 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 of the Bible and of Christianity. As a matter of fact, he started his journey uh, seeking information to discredit Christianity and even Jesus Christ himself. C.S. Lewis started off that way. Let's say more like from an atheistic perspective, but instead of him finding uh, information that, 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 that justified him uh, not believing in Christ and people not believing in Christ, he found just the opposite. He became a Christian after he sought, off, sought, sought out to uh, destroy Christianity. He became one. Remember the Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul, when he uh, got the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, high priest soldiers uh, of the temple and the, his, his, his soldiers, his, his army, and he, was, he got on the horse and he giddy up. He was headed up there to Damascus on the Damascus Road. Mm -hmm. huh. He was going there, why? Because he had heard, yeah, to persecute, uh, he had heard that there was a church starting up <laughs> in Damascus. A church of, uh, of Jewish people primarily, but he, they were headed up there to arrest them, put them in bonds, and bring them back to Jerusalem, turn them over to the Romans, where the Romans would put them in these, uh, oh, let's say, gladiator-type games, and some of them were made slaves and all these different things, yeah. killed by the lions, and all these different things. That's what Paul was going to do. But on the road to Damascus, he met somebody that made his life entirely a turnaround. Yeah. He met Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Paul is one of the most prolific writers of the New Testament. Right? Yeah. C.S. Lewis, he sought to destroy Christianity, but instead some of that Christianity stuff got on him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it got on him, then it got in him. <laughs> Praise God. But this is, what, this is what he says about philosophy. He said, good philosophy must exist if for no other reason because bad philosophy needs to be answered. So if we have the philosophical outlook of God, I would say it like this, it's a sin for us to be quiet. Because we can look out in this world that is wicked, evil, blasphemous, mm -hmm. abominable, philosophies that are being taught to our children in school. We see and hear and read them in the newspapers and on the TV. Remember Isaiah. We, he, he said that woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. Right? This is what we're experiencing today. Again, I must, I must throw in, amen, uh, 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 a, a little note concerning the authenticity of God's word. God knows us. He made us. 
You say, but because bad philosophy needs to be answered. And, and, and I can add a little bit more to what he had said. I didn't put it here. He said, if we are quiet, you see, it's important for us to, 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 to speak uh, the philosophy of God is because if we don't, what's going to happen to the lost? If we are quiet, what do the lost have? Because if they're lost, guess what? Wickedness, evil, bad philosophy is going to rule them for eternity. So we must speak up. Okay. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4, verse 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all what? Jesus. Spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen who? Yes. Us. In him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame. Amen. Before him in Amen. love having what predestinated us unto an adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us acceptable in the beloved. And finally, there is a clear, distinctive voice that dwells outside of the realm of human, human experience, a human existence, I mean, and experience, it is the voice of God. Mm -hmm. It is the voice of God. He has given us his word. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I, I, let me say this before I move on. There are those who, who say, well, uh, what if I'm not predestined? If you're in the church, you're predestined. Mm -hmm. The church is predestined. Okay? Some would, would want to take it personal or, or make it a personal thing from to that degree and say, well, he's, he must not be predestined. I don't believe this thing talked about that. I can be safe to say we certainly know that the church is predestined, and we're all part of the church, all right? Amen, amen. Okay, so let me do, do this. Apostle Paul's warning. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of this world, and not for or not after Christ. Not after Christ. I, I've seen pastors and church leaders, I've seen Christian believers uh, fall after the rudiments of who? Men. A rudiments of this world, vain deceit, spoils through their philosophies. You know, you got you have God's word. There's no if, there's no but. There's no if, there's no and, there's no but. God's word, it stands. It stands for eternity. <laughs> he said, like a rain comes down from heaven and waters the, the, the plant that they may give seed to the soil, fruit to the soil, collects in the, in the, in the stream and stream ditch, ditch into a, a river, goes in the ocean, sun heats it up, it vaporizes, goes back in the, uh, in the sky as a cloud. God said, that's the way my word is. It will never, whatever I, it will accomplish that which I send it to do, it shall never return to me void. That's God's word. Okay? The apostle's confidence, it says that, and my speech, this is 1 Corinthians 2, verses 4 and 5, and my speech and my preaching was not with what? Enticing words. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of what? Power. Power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, 
but in the power of God. Three levels of philosophy. We finally made it. I have to do another session. The three levels, you all probably are know, well, remember them, but it's important that you get a vaccination. If I were to ask, have you applied what I'm sharing with you, have you recognized in the information sources that you are getting that are coming in to, 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 to you? Are you understanding what they're doing to change your outlook, your perspective, your view, your worldview? Can you recognize it? The three levels. You got academia. You got drama, you got tabletop. Three levels of philosophy. Now academia, I can I, I could share with you that uh, above that is, is the uh, master source. You know, in the book of Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Powers. Principalities, huh? What else? It's a power, powers, yeah. principalities, yeah. spiritual what? Wickedness. Wickedness. Where? High In high places. Mm -hmm. Lord have mercy. <laughs> and when you look at let me go ahead and start. I, I, at least I can get it started. I got about five more minutes. By the way, if you, I got some handouts here if you want to make some notes uh, on this, but we can take it up next week. Okay? Let's let you get a glance of it. Academia, the issue of concern, what God says about it drama, primarily the media, what their position is, and then tabletop, our day-to-day -day conversations around the house, and they just call it kitchen table conversation, okay, and the moral outcome of it, or the moral message, okay, so three levels, first, I'll give you a little bit of academia. Academic is a place where ideas and concepts are fostered, incubated, and then injected into the culture when the time is right. When the time is right. Fostered, incubated, and then injected mm -hmm. into the culture when time is right. Uh, I'll, I'll give you one more slide, and then I'll, I'll stop for next the next session. Academia includes uh -oh, churches, seminaries, religious institutions, colleges and universities, mm -hmm. professional organizations, uh, leading cultural icons, leaders in philosophies. You know, I mentioned uh, C.S. Lewis, mm -hmm. and, uh, and but on the other side, there are others also. <laughs> uh, Karl Marx, on the other side, research organizations, they call them think tanks, special interest groups and other organizations, public and private school systems, governmental agencies, including the three branches of our government, the executive, legislative, and judicial. Those three branches of government, and that can be others, but this is what academia works with. This is what academia uh, references. Uh, let me give you a little, uh, a little teaser, so to speak. You know, uh, one philosopher that is very influential, he's dead. Well, he said that when he died that he knew he was going to hell. And 
once he got to hell, what the first thing that he was going to do was organize. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saul Alinsky. Right. <laughs> yeah. And his influences are, are just interwoven throughout our, our academic institutions, our political uh, organizations and, and ideologies and all of this stuff. Uh, one, of his, one of the strategies, I'm going back to 1973, uh, the American Psychological Association prior to that had listed uh, homosexuality, for example, as being an abnormality. But through Saul Alinsky's strategies, the uh, homosexual movement they were able to force, I'm not gonna say convince, force the American Psychological Association to remove that, remove that behavior from the list of abnorm abnormal human behavior. How did they do it? Just like what they're doing today on our streets, protesting, confronting individuals, uh, it doesn't matter, judges, policemen, politicians, uh, getting any type of information on them. And they did this to the board of directors of the American Psychological Association. And what, that ha what happened was they removed that as an abnormal behavior from that list and much of what we are seeing and experiencing today, well, it, it is considered normal. Not because they found a genetic uh, 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 factor that said, well, this person is going to be homosexual, but because of the pressure that was put on the leaders of the board and this strategy has ballooned, blossomed, exploded. Nike, all of these companies, multi-billion dollar institutions, there have been uh, relentless attacks upon these institutions, the board of directors, the leaders, presidents, doesn't matter, governors, they are being attacked. And many of them are giving in. And this explains, actually, what's been happening, why you're shocked and surprised to see so many companies giving in to the philosophies that are anti-Christ and anti-God. That's just a teaser. But that comes from academia. Okay? And there are many other things, but that's just a teaser for the next session. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night, this opportunity. We thank you for those students that are here and to the listeners, Lord. We bless them that we can stand upon your word and understand and recognize from the strategic position that the devil can be defeated if we stay with your word. These things we ask in Jesus' name.